dream big with your assignments and imagine them landing in a publication or, or a broadcaster and aim for that. I started my journalism career a little bit later, you know, around 24 or something like that. And so I was going to be a documentary maker. I was really interested in telling in-depth kind of stories. Along the way, I got some work at the ABC and I swung a bit more towards mainstream journalism, did some postgrad and pieced together, uh, I guess, the assignments that I did at the university course I pitched to the ABC and got an article in the Sydney Morning Herald and started to piece together a bit of a portfolio until when I, I went for the first full-time gig at Triple J, I just, just scraped in. I've always loved radio. I remember buying my first clock radio from a garage sale when I was like four or five and sitting there listening to the radio at night and I love that feeling of being connected with a, a bigger world. I was a little boy growing up in Dubbo in country New South Wales at that point, so radio was this like really great contact point. So I always had a soft spot for it. I liked like the theatre of radio and, and creating this imagery and um, how powerful it can be. I've always liked that more than watching TV. I find TV a little bit too passive, but radio you can do other things and it can work on quite an intellectual level and you can actually get a lot of depth when you're doing radio stories. There was basically a, a period of six months or more where I was on the dole and I was working for this guy for 50 bucks cash a day. So I was kind of like an intern and I was his office lackey. He was um, running some independent documentary productions and I was just in the office, you know, filing bills and doing that kind of stuff. So yeah, it was at least six months with him where I was just like working for $50 a day. But it was good and I, I knew it was getting me somewhere and I was meeting people that were started, you know, that started hiring me for other things and it, it did start to work. So yeah, I've done it. Networking is really important in the media. It might be where your next job or your next story or, uh, comes from. So it's, it's great to know a lot of people, especially when you're starting out and you haven't landed a full-time gig. And I think, you know, probably increasingly for a lot of people, it might be a, a career that is made up of doing a few different things at once. So you need a fingers in a few pies. Not everyone's going to land that, that full-time gig and not everyone would want to either. It can be really exciting to have the flexibility. Stories come from a few sources. You know, sometimes you're just following the big stories of the day, like there'll be an announcement in Canberra about a, a big new policy that the government's launching and you'll be critiquing it, contextualising it and discussing it with the audience. So some things are served up like that. Some comes through new research that you find out about that's being released or through calling around academics and, and seeing what's coming out. Some story ideas come from just real life. We are like, oh, a friend of mine just went through a hell of a breakup and you wouldn't believe what happened next. And you know, we'll sit around the hack editorial meeting going, all oh, right, yeah, well, I guess that's something a lot of people could relate to. And then there's just general reading and like looking at the world and thinking about how it looks from a young person's point of view and how it might be helpful for us to explain things in a really clear way. So some of the stories that do really well are just like, how the hell does this work? And yeah, there's the old, old more old fashioned ways of, you know, journalists digging up stories of just keeping regular contacts in different areas who might know something that's going on or that's, that's, that's changed or developed or, or, or anything that might spark a story. The key thing I, I reckon when you're pitching a story to someone is to actually nail the pitch, to nail that one liner of what your story is actually about and then, it, and then it goes from there. Because if you're approaching someone, they're often busy and they just need a clear idea of where it's heading. If you call or email someone and um, you, know, you, you go through a sort of big preamble as to the whole broader area of the topic that you're looking into, blah, 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 it's like, no, no, what's the, what's the key thing that the story is going to give me? And if you can boil that down, you're more easily open doors. Well, the media landscape's changed a lot around us. You know, Hack has been there for over 10 years. But yeah, you've seen the, I guess, the, the recent cynicism around the mainstream media and this idea of fake news. There was also a proliferation of, of new blogs and um, new media outlets that we were competing against as a fairly traditional platform. So we adapted to that a little bit and, you know, obviously became a bit more digital first and we stopped pri prioritising radio all the time and really thinking about the way we roll out our coverage online. We sort of thought about how we sit 
relative to those other platforms and we feel that we have a unique advantage being a, a taxpayer funded mainstream platform where we can use the you know the traditional medium of radio but also harness um, social media and uh, online reporting as well and what we thought we could do best is do really solid reporting with a lot of integrity because a lot of the new blogs were going for like really extreme stuff or really opinion driven stuff and so we felt that particularly as the government broadcaster being a solid reliable independent down the middle kind of voice is how we could serve our audience the best. Music's always just been fun for me and I kind of landed in client liaison by accident and it's been an amazing ride and um, initially I was like, oh, how am I going to juggle this? Because, you know, I might work all week on Hack and then I might fly to Melbourne to rehearse with the boys all weekend. And you'd sort of think, well, if you were doing journalism all week and then you were doing more journalism on the weekend, you'd be exhausted. But music uses a different part of the brain. And actually I feel like fitting the band in around um, radio has made me even more driven and made me realise actually what's possible with your time. And you can actually do so much. You know, I started getting up early and getting reading done before work. And then, yeah, fitting in tons of music sometimes in the evenings or, or the weekends or even doing a tour. Yeah, both kind of inspire each other. And you, you come out from a weekend of touring, roll into work on Monday, like, all right, let's talk news and current affairs, you know. How's your weekend? It's like, yeah, I was, I was in Perth and Adelaide playing a gig. And it's like, you still come in refreshed because it's exciting and it's activating a different part of your brain. My key piece of advice would be if you're studying journalism at uni that you don't think of your assignments as assignments, you think of them as freelance pieces. So anything that you're making during your journalism studies, pitch it to a mainstream or, or, or an alternate media outlet. Think of it as something that could go anywhere. If it's a good story, why can't it, you know, if you're in Perth, why can't it run in the West Australian? Or why couldn't you get it on ABC Radio or something like that? So. Dream big with your assignments and imagine them landing in a publication or, or a broadcaster and aim for that.